Hi, this is Sanjay Vaid, and uh, I'm sharing this project, which is on the oil and gas sector India analysis. We have divided this report in two parts. The first part looks at the industry of oil and gas in India and presents the report in terms of uh, the industry's uh, uh, analysis. And the second part is uh, focused on the analysis of some specific companies. And we look at their performance, the financial ratios, and how they've been doing uh, in the market. And then we end with a conclusion. So we are essentially uh, looking at, uh, from the industry analysis, uh, various factors. One, uh, as this dashboard represents, we're looking at the India's capacity in terms of refineries. Uh, as you can see on the screen, uh, we have mapped the, uh, you know, the various states uh, in the Indian map, uh, the capacity of refinery uh, and uh, the crude oil processing in MMTPA and MT. Uh, and for example, right now we have the data of the Jamnagar facility uh, in Gujarat, and uh, which is for Reliance, uh, having the installed capacity of 33 uh, MMTPA and crude oil processing of 34.1 and installed capacity of 33.0. Uh, as on uh, 1st January 2022. And similarly, we have mapped within the uh, India's uh, diagram uh, the various other figures of, uh, you know, the capacity India has uh, for, let's say, the Mangalore refineries in Mangalore and so forth and so on. And then we have also mapped the PNG and CNG capacity India has uh, uh, you know, for example, in Madhya Pradesh, India has uh, a count of four CNG, a PNG connectivity of 414, CNG stations 240, PNG connection commercials 321, PNG connections domestic 196,211, and PNG connections industry 414. Uh, similarly, we have studied the margins of various uh, oil and gas companies which uh, exist in India, their gross margins. And uh, we have looked at the capital expenditure. Uh, so this is a summary dashboard in what uh, we have covered. Of course, we have covered a lot. Uh, uh, as we have discussed, we have covered the uh, refinery capacity uh, India has. Uh, and uh, we had covered the PNG and CNG capacity uh, and the pipeline India has, uh, which is uh, this particular diagram in terms of the uh, installed capacity and crude capacity India has in uh, various states of the country. And then similarly, we have done uh, the economic indicator uh, for India. Uh, the economical indicator looks at what is the percentage of export vis-a-vis uh, -vis the import India has uh, and the that reflecting in the, uh, you know, the deficit, trade deficit India has uh, because it has to uh, utilize its foreign reserves in order to fulfill the requirement of its export. As you can see in this particular uh, worksheet, that uh, we obviously have been importing far more, uh, you know, units, uh, of almost, uh, uh, you know, 611.9 billion uh, as compared to, uh, you know, what uh, our, uh, you know, export have been. So there is a big... Uh, uh, delta when it comes to this. And that's reflecting in uh, the trade deficit which we have in our economic indications. And uh, then, of course, we are looking at uh, 
the production capacity uh, which we have. Similarly, from the oil and gas perspective, we have done an analysis on the pipeline which we have uh, in India. It covers almost 21,274 kilometers uh, in total. Uh, and uh, it has been facilitated by uh, the various uh, uh, companies, Indian Oil, Bar Petroleum, Moen GC, and others. And the capacities we have tried to analyze in terms of the crude oil capacity each of these companies have there. And uh, we have tried to analyze the gross margin, which uh, has uh, a very interesting uh, you know, inside that NRL seems to be having a quite a bit of uh, gross profit. And uh, another interesting take is that uh, barring um, reliance over here, we see that in 2022, MRPL, you know, a gross margin has shot up. IOCL gross margin is shot up and there is a big gap here in terms of the, the, the steep hike. Right? Uh, HPCL, uh, CPCL, Chinni Petroleum, PPCL and Boril. Similarly, uh, when it comes to the production capacity of India vis-a-vis uh, -vis the consumption uh, we do uh, there again, we have uh, very interesting stats. Uh, uh, of course, uh, we have uh, certain things which uh, we are producing more than we are consuming. But uh, uh, in a total, uh, we see uh, it's quite uh, spread when it comes to the LPG, LNG and different uh, oil and gas products. Uh, which we have there. In some cases, uh, you know, the internal production has picked up, uh, uh, you know, as against the consumption in 2001, 2022. Uh, so that's quite a revealing analysis. And then we have done, you know, um, an analysis in terms of uh, what is produced locally and what is getting uh, imported there. And uh, there again, we see uh, a major, you know, consumption of uh, the uh, natural gases, uh, which is happening. Uh, and uh, the production of uh, this gas in India is 29,000, um, you know, 672 uh, uh, in 2000. 21 consumption is 60,982, uh, whereas in 2022 the production has increased uh, by to 34,024, uh, whereas the consumption also increased to 64,159. So there is quite catching up which is happening uh, in terms of uh, the production is as as against consumption. We obviously produce much lower than what we consume in in this in this area. And then uh, the capital expenditure uh, by public sector. Uh, we see in this analysis that uh, by far Indian oil has been the biggest spender uh, consecutively for past four years. Um, then they are followed by uh, Hindustan Petroleum uh, and uh, Bharat Petroleum, uh, you know, Oil India. Uh, and uh, then uh, we have Gas Authority of India, uh, which are in the league, who are the biggest spenders in India when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, oil and gas sector. The other aspect of the story, which we have tried to cover, is uh, we've picked some companies, uh, which are predominantly into the upstream, uh, downstream. Uh, upstream, essentially, are companies which do oil exploration, produce oil. Midstream are the refineries and downstream are the pipelines which goes to the petrol pumps, etc. So as far as the um, uh, upstream is concerned, we have taken ONGC. Uh, in the downstream, we are trying to 
uh, do a mix of private and public sector companies. So we've taken Indian oil, Bharat Petroleum, Hindustan Petroleum from the uh, PSU and Reliance from the private sector. And then we have mapped the headquarters, Reliance being in Mumbai, Indian oil headquarter uh, being an ONGC being in Delhi, Oil India uh, uh, being in East and uh, BPCL, HPCL in Mumbai. So we have done some uh, analysis of these companies uh, in terms of various uh, aspects. So that includes, uh, you know, the sales of these companies vis-a-vis -vis the operation bar profit margin. Uh, we have done analysis of earning per share and uh, price to earning. And then we have looked at the cash flow of these companies. And we have found very interesting facts in terms of, uh, uh, you know, the borrowing and in terms of uh, the return on capital and return of investment these companies are having, uh, as far as efficiently using the cash. And uh, this uh, comes up in a workbook uh, in terms of various uh, uh, analytical splicing and dicing uh, of data, uh, drilling the various facts uh, as against the other uh, factors. So this, of course, is uh, the mapping of these companies uh, in India to the various states and cities where they are headquartered. This is an analysis of cash flow. Uh, one interesting finding about Reliance has been that they are, you know, uh, 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 the cash from financial activity and uh, especially the cash from investment activities have been going negative year on year. Um, the other public sectors also has a very strange phenomena here, especially uh, uh, towards the cash flow from financial activities, all of them being negative, you know, at, at, at various uh, levels. ONGC, of course, is the highest in this area. So that's uh, a summary in sort of uh, this particular, you know, area um, of uh, the cash flow. And then we have done further, uh, you know, analysis. This is debt to days and inventory turnover of these companies. And what we find here is that uh, the companies like Bharat Petroleum, Hindustan Petroleum, um, and, uh, you know, uh, IOCL, um, and to some degree uh, reliance, but especially these companies, you see that the debtor days is less than the inventory turnover. That means they 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 get money faster from the debtor as compared to the consumption of the inventory. Now let's look at that from an upstream provider like ONGC, which has a completely opposite, uh, you know. A structure where their uh, debt to days is much higher, whereas in inventory turnover is faster. Why? Because these very downstream providers like BPC and HPCL are buying the inventory from them. So the inventory moves very fast. Uh, the downstream provider have to sell them. The downstream provider, the same on the other hand, have to sell it to retailers. So it's longer cycle to you know consume the complete inventory. Um, hence, uh, you know, uh, for ONGC, then they these are B2B dealings and they have to, you know, uh, get the money from BPC and HPC and others. So they seem to have a higher debt ratio, but the graph is interesting from that perspective. Then uh, uh, we look at uh, the capital debt and we find uh, that. Um, there is a, a high borrowing uh, as far as ONGC is concerned, they're followed by Reliance, um, you know, and uh, uh, that's an uh, uh, interesting uh, analysis we get for these companies. Uh, and they are completely outlier, these two companies, 
uh, in terms of the sheer volume uh, as compared to the others. Uh, the the nearest that comes is Indian oil as far as this particular area is concerned. And these are some analysis on earning per share and price to earning for all the companies, Bharat Petroleum, Indusan Petroleum, Indian Oil, ONGC, Reliance. Of course, Reliance has been consistently moving up as far as EPS is concerned. Uh, and, you know, by far uh, ahead as compared to our public sector companies. And then uh, we look at uh, the return on equity as well, which we have analyzed to an uh, degree. Uh, we look at the past three years of profit. It seems that everybody is doing uh, remarkably well when it comes to profit. Reliance profits are up. Interestingly, um, the sales growth for NGC is decent. The margin has gone up. Uh, uh, you know, and uh, from the operations. Uh, so they've been managed very, very well and they seem to be earning more margins. And so so we see a very healthy profitability for all the uh, oil and gas companies uh, as we look at them. Assets and liabilities, uh, you know, the very, very interesting observation here comes is reserves reliance remarkably has a lot of reserves, followed by ONGC, a lot of reserves as well. And Reliance also has, uh, you know, uh, a lot of other assets. Uh, so that's another, uh, you know, plus for them, uh, as far as Reliance is concerned. But yeah, reserves uh, and net blocks, uh, both for Reliance, and especially the net blocks for ONGC are very high there. So that's uh, another finding which we get of this uh, particular analysis. And uh, essentially um, what uh, we understand is that this sector um, in India has uh, quite a big a dominance by public sector companies, the Hindustan Petroleum, Indian Oil, Oil, um, Bharat Petroleum, Oil India, uh, Bangalore refineries, Chennai refineries, uh, Chennai Petroleum. Uh, Reliance is an exception which meets a huge demand for the country. Um, uh, as far as the spending is concerned, Indian Oil is the biggest spender in India. Uh, followed by Bharat Petroleum and OGC. Um, and uh, of course, Reliance is uh, a major uh, player with highest reserves uh, as far as uh, companies concerned. And then it seems and always is relevant uh, by the fact that India is the second largest populous country in the world, has a huge demand of oil and gas. And the major player in this sector, uh, which is public sector along with Reliance, uh, are doing major portion of the you know work. Import still remains a very high factor uh, as compared to the consumption, uh, and that is a major cause for the trade deficit India has. Uh, and um, this consumption and production gap has to be reduced. Uh, the upstream companies have lower inventory turnover ratio as against debtor. Uh, so that's another finding. Uh, overall, it's a very healthy industry. Um, and I hope you like uh, this particular analysis and this particular finding. Thank you very much.